with us. We had only one port, Cherbourg. Manpower, ammo, gas, everything had to reach us from that distance. We needed the great Belgian port of Antwerp. But the Nazi knew that too and held on to it. The war had just about destroyed France's railroads and rolling stock. And so from Cherbourg and even those Normandy beaches where we'd landed, trucks had to haul everything we needed. Top-ranked planning had figured on an October offensive, but the supply problem was going to delay that final knockout punch. Weeks later, Antwerp was ours, but the enemy still denied us the use of its port. It was beyond Antwerp we got our first setback. An airborne attack that was going to outflank the enemy and take us right into central Germany was stopped cold. Niemagen ended talk about a quick finish to the war. Niemagen ended rumors about getting home for Christmas. All of those weeks our buildup had gone on. It still meant hauling from Cherbourg and the beaches, but now we had a super speed system. It was called the Red Ball Express. And to get us set for an all-out offensive, it worked round the clock. Then one day there was an unscheduled meeting at a place called Mons. That little slugfest at Mons had knocked off two Nazi armies. More important, it had opened the way to the German city of Aachen. We'd already moved into the enemy's home grounds, where they lay on our side of the Siegfried Line, or weren't important enough to defend. But this was going to be a real showdown. We'd have to blast them out of Aachen. And that's what we did. flags began to pop up around town. And being polite, we broke out one of our own. Aachen was a starter. Just one month later, General Omar N. Bradley called signals and the big blast was on. The Rhineland fell at first. Between us and the Rhineland stretched that Siegfried line. Its entire length still intact, except where we'd crashed through it at Aachen. The enemy orders called for a standard die fight against the foreign invaders. That was us. Assault by air could only soften. The rest was up to us. than we'd figured. When you can't stand and you don't want to die, well, there's always a third way. Now we went after our biggest target so far, the fortress city of Metz.
Maybe we forgot our manners with the latest batch of Nazis who forgot to stand or die. But Mets hadn't been easy. Nothing was going to be easy anywhere along our lines. For the Nazi Wehrmacht was tough. us good men. Green replacements were becoming seasoned old soldiers almost overnight. Then there was good news from Belgium. Antwerp was working for us at last. The enemy had been knocked out of the skies and from the islands surrounding the big port. Shortages of ammo, gas, equipment weren't going to limit our movements again. things we needed were coming in. But those weeks we'd lost were going to help hand us our heaviest jolt. For now it was winter. Once upon a time, armies just stopped fighting when winter hit. Winter slowed down movement. Winter meant additional hardship. But we couldn't give up the initiative. We had to go on. Nazi had been counting on winter weather, and he knew just where he could make it pay off. In the middle of our line, stretching about 85 miles, was the Ardennes Forest. To its north, we had two divisions. There were two more in the south. We were using the Ardennes as a combined training and rest area. The Nazi knew that, too. His tanks and forces had been massed under tightest security in concealed areas. Now he lashed out. It was a now or never gamble. With his dwindling reserves of equipment and toughened veterans from the Russian campaigns, he aimed to split us in two and drive on to retake Antwerp. We paid for it. Once again, the natives were leaving their farms with everything they could carry. The Nazi planning didn't include rations. They were that desperate. They'd live off the land till they could stock up from our warehouses at Liège and Reims. That's where he headed, punching a bulge into our thinly held line. Outside a little town nobody'd ever heard of, named Bastogne, we dug in. The Bastogne commanded the highways to those cities. We dug in and held 24 hours a day while we waited for relief. There weren't any more cooks, company clerks, bakers. Only